there's probably no relationship that's more important to the future of world order than between the U.S. and China, these two great world powers. And unfortunately, in their relationship, there's probably no issue that's becoming more troublesome than cybersecurity. And there's an irony in that, in that um, it's so new compared to these more traditional wedges between them, whether it's um, trade or human rights or uh, the, the Taiwan Straits issue, regional disputes, whatever. Um, and yet cybersecurity, you know, which was an issue, which was a term that literally didn't exist you know, a generation ago, is becoming a core wedge. And so that's really the problem set here is we have to figure out how to deal with this. Otherwise, it's going to get worse for this relationship. And that, in turn, is worse for the world. On top of that, you have the fact that these two nations very much represent two different futures of the internet. And that's why their bilateral aspect on this are so key. There's a lot of other players out there in cybersecurity, but if the US and China don't get it right in their relationship, there's really not much hope at the international level. One of the particular challenges right now is that both these nations feel very under siege in cybersecurity, but for very different reasons. So in the US, we've looked at things like social networking, Facebook, this massive distribution of information and sharing as a pretty much good thing. Um, a lot of people talk about it as an inherent right. Um, the Secretary of State has talked about it in that way. You cross the ocean and that very same thing is seen as something that's threatening to stability, as scary. The flip side is um, in the US, there's been a lot of attention paid recently to various incidents where um, people's uh, email accounts have been broken into, um, information uh, taken, and information taken that's been not so much about classic cyber theft out there, you know, stealing bank account information. It's been more about um, taking information of some kind of strategic value. And what we're seeing in essence in the cybersecurity realm is a shift from the fear of um, individual hackers who are mainly you know, out there interested in, in attention to more organized efforts, um, basically either criminal groups or state-related or even state-sponsored espionage groups. And so we saw that, for example, in the um, Operation Shady Rat, which was this operation where um, over 70 different national governments, state and local governments, corporations, particularly those in the defense and technology space, and even a number of research institutions were all penetrated, basically their information taken out. And so what we're getting at here is um, a changing threat landscape where all the sides feel very much under siege, but for very different reasons. Policymakers talk about how they feel um, ill-equipped to deal with these issues. Um, sometimes people make a parallel to the Cold War and they'll say things like, you know, we're in a cyber Cold War. And one of the things we go into is how that's a really, really bad metaphor, that that's not what's happening right now. But there is one part of it that I think does carry over. If you go back to the Cold War, there was this period in the late 1940s and early 1950s where, you know, essentially people didn't understand what was going on, didn't even understand the basics of nuclear weapons. And you got some pretty crazy ideas back then that were taken seriously. The way I think about it is that um, you had real world figures that later inspired the movie Dr. Strangelove who were taken seriously. They weren't seen as comic, they were taken seriously. And the problem right now is that we have that same kind of mix of hype, hysteria, real threat, but also ignorance. And they're all coming together and creating a really bad witch's brew. And so what we did is gathered a group of the top private and public sector leaders experts in U.S.-China issues, but also experts in technology, representative of all the key government agencies, the key corporations, brought them together and said, okay, what are the issues that we need to figure out here? And then this report is essentially the fruits of that, trying to put it in a concise manner, okay, what do we need to understand right now to be able to move forward effectively?